Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco of VMware Explorer 2022. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, host of theCUBE. We're two sets, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our 12th year covering VMware's annual conference, Dave. Formerly VMworld, now VMware Explorer. Uh, we're kicking off day two. Vinod Sharma, Director of Product Management at Google Cloud GCP. Vinod, thanks for coming on theCUBE, good to see you. Yeah, very nice to see you as well. It's been a while, Google uh, Next, Cloud Next is your event. We haven't been there because of the pandemic. Now you got an event coming up in October. Just want to give that plug out there in October 11th. Uh, it's going to be kind of a hybrid show. Uh, you guys with GCP doing great. Getting uh, Coming up on, in, in the rear with third place, Amazon, Azure, GCP. Uh, you guys have really nailed the developer and the AI and the data piece on the cloud. And now with VMware, with multi-cloud, you guys are in the mix in the universal program mm -hmm. that they got here, it's been, been a partnership. Talk about the Google VMware relationship real quick. Yeah, no, I want to first address uh, you know, us being in third place. I think when, uh, when customers think about cloud transformation, yeah. you know, they, they, uh, for, for them it's all about how you can extract value from the data, you know, how you can transform your business with AI, and as far as that's concerned, we're in first place. <laughs> um, now, uh, coming to the VMware partnership, what we observed was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, first of all, like, there's a lot of data gravity yeah. built over the past you know, 20 years in IT, you know, and you know, VMware has you know, really standardized IT platforms. And when it comes to uh, the data gravity, uh, what we found was that you know, uh, customers want to extract the value that you know, lives in that data, as I was just talking about, but uh, they find it hard to change architectures and you know, bring those architectures into you know, the cloud uh, native world uh, you know, with microservices and so forth, uh, especially when you know, these applications have been built over the last 20 years with off the shelf, you know, commercial off the shelf uh, in, you know, systems. Um, you don't even know who wrote the code, <laughs> you don't know what the IP address configuration is, and it's, you know, if you change anything, it can break your production. But at the same time, they want to take advantage of what the cloud has to offer, you know, the self-service, the elasticity, you know, the, the economies of scale, efficiencies of operation. So we wanted to, uh, you, know, bring, you know, bring the cloud to where the customer is with this service. And, uh, you know, with, like I said, you know, VMware was the de facto IT platform. So uh, it was a no brainer for us to say, you know what, we'll give VMware in a native manner yeah. uh, for our customers and bring all the benefits of the cloud into it uh, to help them transform and take advantage of the cloud. It's interesting, and you called out that the, the advantages of Google Cloud. One of the things that we've observed is, you know, VMware trying to be much more cloud native in their messaging and their yeah. positioning. They're trying to connect into that developer world for cloud native. I mean, Google, I mean, you guys have been cloud native literally from day one, just as a company, yeah. infrastructure wise. I mean, DevOps was, and infrastructure as code was Google's DNA. I mean, you had Borg, which became Kubernetes. Everyone kind of knows that in the history if, you, if you're in, in the, inside the ropes. Yeah. So as you guys have that core competency of essentially infrastructure as code, which is basically cloud, how are you guys bringing that into the enterprise with VMware? Because that's where the puck is going, right? That's yeah. where the use cases are. Okay, you got data, clearly an advantage there. Developers, you guys do really well with developers. We see that at say KubeCon and CNCF. Where's the use cases as the enterprise start to really figure out that this is now happening with hybrid and they got to be more cloud native? Are they ramping up certain use cases? Can you share and connect the dots between what you guys had as your core competency and where the enterprise use cases are? Yeah, yeah. you know, I think transformation uh, means a lot of things, especially when you get into the cloud. You want to be not only efficient, uh, but you also want to make sure you're secure, right? and that you can manage and maintain your infrastructure in a way that you can reason about it when, you know, when uh, things go wrong. Um, we took a very unique approach with Google Cloud VMware Engine uh, when we brought it to the cloud, uh, to Google Cloud. Uh, what we did uh, was we, we took like a cloud native approach. You know, it, it would seem like, you know, uh, 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 weird to say that, okay, VMware is cloud native. But in fact, that's what we've done with this service. From the ground up, one of the things we wanted to do was make sure we meet all the enterprise needs, availability, uh, we are the only service that gives four nines of SLA in a single site. Uh, we are the only service that has fully redundant networking so that 
you know, some of the pets that you run on the VMware platform with your operational databases and the keys to the kingdom, uh, you know, uh, they can be run in an efficient manner and in a, in a, in a stable manner and, and, and you know, uh, in a highly available fashion. But we also uh, paid attention to performance. One of our customers, uh, Mitel, runs a unified communication service and uh, what they found was you know, the high performance infrastructure, low latency infrastructure, actually helps them deliver you know, highly reliable uh, uh, you know, communication experience to their customers, right? And so, you know, we, you know, while, you know, so we developed the service from the ground up, making sure we meet the needs of these enterprise applications, but also wanted to make sure it's positioned for the future well integrated into Google Cloud VPC networking, billing, identities, access control, you know, support, all of that with a one-stop shop, right? And so uh, this completely changes the game uh, for, for enterprises on the outset, but what's more, like we also have built-in integration to cloud operations, you know, a single pane of glass for managing all your cloud infrastructure. Uh, you know, you have the ability to easily ELT into BigQuery and you know, get a data transformation uh, going that way from your operational databases. So, so I think we took a very like, clean room ground, from the ground up approach to make sure we get the best of both worlds to our customers. So you essentially made the VMware stack a first class citizen connecting to all the Google tools. Did you build a bare metal instance to be able to support that? We, we actually have a very customized infrastructure to make sure that you know, uh, the experience that customers are looking for in the VMware context is what we can deliver to them and uh, like I said, you know, being able to manage the pets uh, in, in addition to the cattle that, uh, that we, are, we are getting with the uh, modern uh, uh, containerized workloads. It, and it's not likely you did that as a one-off. I, I would presume that other partners can potentially take advantage of that, that approach as well, is that true? Absolutely, so one of our other examples is, uh, is SAP. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our SAP infrastructure runs on very similar kind of uh, you know, highly redundant infrastructure. Uh, some, some parts of it, and, and then you know, we also have in the same context partners such as NetApp. So, so customers want to you know, truly, uh, so, so there's two parts to it, right? One is to meet customers where they already are, but also take them to the future, and our partner uh, NetApp has delivered a cloud service that is well integrated into the platform, serves use cases like VDI, uh, serves use cases for you know, uh, tier two uh, uh, data protection scenarios, DR, uh, and also high performance uh, context uh, that customers are looking for. Explain to people, because I think a lot of times people don't understand, oh, NetApp, but doesn't Google have storage? Yeah. So explain that relationship and why that, that is complementary yeah. and not just some kind of divergence from your strategy. Yeah, yeah, no, so I think the, the idea here is, um, NetApp, the NetApp platform, uh, living uh, on-prem, you know, for for so many years, it's it's built a lot of capabilities that customers take advantage of, right? So, for example, it has the snap mirror capabilities that enable, you know, instant uh, DR of between locations, and um, customers. When they think of the cloud, they are also thinking of heterogeneous context where some of the infrastructure is still needs to live on-prem. So uh, you know, they have the DR uh, going on from the on-prem side using Snap Mirror into Google Cloud. And so you know, it enables that entry point into the cloud. And so we believe you know, partnering with NetApp kind of enables these high performance, you know, high uh, you know, reliability, and also enables the uh, customers to meet uh, regulatory needs for you know, the DR and data protection that they're looking and, for. And, and NetApp, obviously a big VMware partner as well, so I can take that partnership with VMware and NetApp into the Google Cloud, yeah, correct? Yeah, it's all about leverage, like I said, you know, meeting customers where they already are and ensuring that we smoothen their journey into the future rather than making it like a single step, you know, uh, quantum leap, so to speak, uh, between two worlds. You know, I think, you know, I like to say like, uh, for, the, for the longest time, the cloud was being presented as a false choice between, you know, the infrastructure as, uh, of, of the past and the infrastructure of the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the red pill and the blue pill, yeah. right? <laughs> and, you know, we've, I like to say like, I've, you know, we've brought, brought into, the, uh, into this context the purple pill, right, which gives you really the best of both worlds. 
Yeah, and this is a uh, tailwind for you guys now. I want to get your thoughts on this and your differentiation around multi-cloud that's around the corner. Yeah. I mean, everyone now recognizes at least multi-cloud's a reality. People have workloads on AWS, Azure, and GCP. That is technically multi-cloud. Yeah. Now the notion of spanning applications across clouds is coming. Yeah. Certainly hybrid cloud is a steady state, which is essentially DevOps on-prem or edge in the cloud. So, so you have now the recognition that's yeah. here. You guys are positioned well for this. How is that uh, evolving? How are you positioning yourself with, and how you're differentiating around as clients start thinking, hey, you know what, I can start running things on AWS and GCP yeah. and on-prem in a really kind of a distributed way yeah. with abstractions and these things that people are talking about, super yeah. cloud, what we call it. And, and this is really the conversation. Like, okay, what does that next future around the corner architecture look like and how do you guys fit in? Because this is an opportunity for you guys. It's almost, it's almost, it's like Wayne Gretzky. The puck is coming to you. Yeah, yeah. It seems that way to me. What, how, how do you respond to that? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, um, Raghu said, uh, yes, said it yesterday, right? It's all about being cloud smart in this new heterogeneous world. I think Google Cloud has always been the most open and the most uh, customer-oriented cloud. Uh, and the reason I say that is because, you know, looking at like our Kubernetes platform, right? Uh, what we've enabled with Kubernetes uh, and Anthos is the ability for a customer to run containerized infrastructure in the same consistent manner, uh, no matter what the platform. So while, you know, uh, Kubernetes runs on GKE, you can run using Anthos on the VMware platform and you can run using Anthos on any other cloud uh, on the planet, in, including AWS, Azure, uh, and, and so it's, uh, you know, we, we take a very open, we've taken an open approach with Kubernetes to begin with, uh, but uh, you know, the, the fact that uh, you know, with Anthos and this multi-cloud management experience that we can provide customers, we are, we are letting customers get the full freedom of uh, an advantage of what multi-cloud has to, has to offer. And, I like to say, you know, VMware is the Kubernetes of IaaS, <laughs> right? Because if you think about it, it's the only hypervisor that uh, you can run in the same consistent manner, take the same VM image, and run it on any of the providers, right? And you can, you know, uh, link it, you know, with the, the L2 extensions and create a fabric that spans yeah. the world uh, and, and, and multiple providers. With, a, with almost every company using VMware. That's pretty right, much. that's right. It's the largest, like the VMware network <laughs> of, of infrastructure is the largest network on the planet, right? And so, uh, so it's, it's truly about enabling customer choice. We believe that every cloud, um, you know, brings its advantages and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the technology uh, of, uh, you know, capabilities of yeah. the provider, the differentiation of the provider, need to stand on its merit. Yeah. And so, you know, we truly embrace uh, this notion of multi-cloud. Those ops guys have to connect to, opportunities to connect to you guys in, yeah. in, the, in the cloud. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'd like to ask a question sort of about database philosophy and maybe, maybe futures a little bit. There seems to be two camps. Uh, I mean, you've got multiple databases. You've got Spanner for, you know, kind of global distributed database. You've got BigQuery for analytics. There seems to be a trend in the industry for some uh, providers to say, okay, let's, let's converge the transactions and, and analytics and kind of maybe eliminate the need to do a lot of ELTing. And others are saying, no, no, we want to be, be you know, really precise and distinct uh, with our capabilities and, and, and have a bespoke set of capabilities, right tool for the right job, let's call mm -hmm. it. What's Google's philosophy in that regard and, and how do you think about database in the future? So, so I think, you know, um, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, something as general and as complex as data, right? Uh, you know, data lives in all shapes and forms. It, it moves at various velocities. It moves at various scale. And so, you know, uh, we truly believe that, uh, you know, customers should have the flexibility and freedom to put things together using, you know, these various contexts uh, and, and you know, build the right set of outcomes for themselves. So, you know, we, we provide Cloud SQL, right, where customers can run their own, uh, you know, dedicated infrastructure fully managed and operated by Google at a high level of SLA compared to any other way of doing it. Uh, we have uh, a database uh, born in the cloud, a data warehouse born in the cloud, BigQuery, which enables zero ops, you know, zero touch, you know, instant, uh, uh, you know, high performance analytics uh, at scale. 
uh, you know, uh, Spanner gives customers high levels of reliability and redundancy in, in, in a worldwide context. Uh, so uh, with, with, with extreme levels of innovation coming from uh, you know the the, the NTP uh, uh, you know uh, sinks that happen across uh, different instances. Right. So uh, you know I, we we do think that uh, you know data moves at different scale and, and different velocity, and and uh, you know uh, customers have a complex set of needs, and and so our portfolio of database services put together can truly address all ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've certainly been following you guys at CNCF and the work that Google Cloud's doing. Extremely strong technical people, yeah. really open source focused, yeah. um, great products, technology, you guys do a great job. Uh, and I, I would imagine, and it's clear, that VMware is an opportunity for you guys, given the DNA of their customer base, the install base is huge. You guys have that nice potential connection where these customers are kind of going, where the puck is going, you guys are there now. For the next couple of minutes, give a Give a plug for Google Cloud to the VMware customer base out there. Yeah. Why Google Cloud? Why now? What's in it for them? What's the what's the value part? Give the give the uh, plug for yeah, Google absolutely. Cloud to the uh, VMware community. Absolutely. So so I think you know especially with VMware Engine, what we've built you know is truly like a cloud native next generation enterprise platform, right? Uh, and it does three specific things, right? It gives you a cloud optimized experience. Right, like the the idea being, you know, self-service efficiencies, economies, you know, uh, operational benefits. Uh, you get that from the platform, and a customer like Mitel was able to take advantage of that, uh, being able to use the same platform that they were running in their co-located co context, and migrate more than a thousand VMs in less than 90 days. Something that they weren't able to do for for over two years. <laughs> um, the second aspect of our uh, you know, uh, transformation journey that we enable with this service uh, is uh, cloud integration. What that means is uh, the same VPC experience that you get in uh, the, the, the networking, uh, global networking that Google Cloud has to offer, the VMware platform is fully integrated into that. And so the benefits of uh, you know, having a subnet that can live anywhere in the world uh, you know, having multi-VPC, but more importantly, the benefits of having these Google Cloud services like BigQuery and Spanner and uh, cloud operations management at your fingertips in the same layer three domain. You know, just make an IP call and your data is uh, transformed into BigQuery from your operational databases. And Carrefour, uh, the retailer in Europe, actually was able to do that with our service. And not only that, you know, do, do the operational transform into uh, BigQuery, uh, you know, from their, the data gravity living in VMware on, on VMware Engine, uh, but they were able to do it in a, you know, cost effective uh, manner. They, they saved, uh, you know, over 40% compared to the, uh, the current uh, context, and also lower the, uh, uh, increase the agility of operations at the same time. Right? And so for them, this was extremely transform transformative. Um, and lastly, we believe uh, in the context of being open, we are also a very partner-friendly uh, cloud. And so uh, you know, customers come, bring VMware platform because of all the IT uh, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem that comes along with it, right? You've got your Veeam or your Zerto or your Rubrik or your Cohesity for data protection and, and backup. You've got uh, security from uh, Fortanix, Thales, uh, uh, Fortinet. Um, you know, you've got, uh, you know, like we would already talked about NetApp storage. So, we, you know, we're open in that technology context. ISVs, you know, are fully supported. Integration's key. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, you know, that's how you build a platform, right? Yeah. And so, so we enable that. Uh, but, but, you know, we also enable customers getting uh, into the future, going into the future through their AI, uh, through the AI capabilities and services that are once again available at, at their fingertips. Uh, awesome. So, Minosh, thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, as super cloud, as we call it, or multi-cloud comes around the corner, you got the edge exploding. You guys do a great job in networking and security, which is well known. What's your view of this super cloud, multi-cloud world? What's different about it? Why isn't it just SaaS on cloud? What's, what's this next gen cloud really about, if you had to kind of, kind of explain that 
uh, to the business folks and technical folks out there? Is it, is it something unique? Do you see a, a refactoring? Is it something that does something different? Yeah. Uh, what's, no. What doesn't make it just SaaS? Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, you know, there's, there's different use cases that customers have, have in mind when they, when they think about multi-cloud. I think the first thing is they don't want to have uh, you know, all eggs in a single basket, right? Uh, and, and so you know, it, it helps diversify their risk. I mean, and it's a real problem. Like you, you see outages in, 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 you know, in, in availability zones that take out entire businesses. So customers do want to make sure that they are not, uh, they're, they're able to increase their availability, increase their resiliency mm -hmm. through the use of multiple providers. But I think, uh, so, so that's like getting the same thing in different contexts. But at the same time, uh, uh, the context is shifting, right? There is some, there's some data sources that originate uh, you know, elsewhere, mm -hmm. and the scale and the velocity of those sources is so vast. You, know, you, you might be producing video from retail stores, and uh, you, know, you want to make sure you know, there's, there's security and uh, there's a, a, you know, a in, information awareness built about uh, those sources. And so you want to process that data at the source and take instant decisions uh, with that proximity. And that's why we believe with the GDC, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, with, with both, both the edge versions and the hosted versions, uh, GDC stands for Google, Google Distributed Cloud where we bring the benefit and value of Google Cloud to different uh, locations uh, on the edge as well as on-prem. And so I think uh, you know, those kinds of contexts become important. And so I think uh, you know, uh, we, you know, we are, not only do we need to be uh, open and pervasive, uh, you know, but we also need to be compatible and, and, uh, uh, and also uh, have the proximity to where uh, information lives and value lives. Minosh, thanks for coming on theCUBE here yeah. at VMware Explore, formerly VMworld. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, okay, guys. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, live day two. Coverage here on Moscone West Lobby for VMware Explorer. We'll be right back with more after this short break.